hello from a rather wet Mile Lakes. Uh, we're up here again for another raid, and I think we've got, uh, potentially we've got 15 boats coming. Some of us came last night and stayed at Johnson's Beach, and we had a really nice evening. Uh, it wasn't meant to really rain overnight, but it poured all night, and it's pouring now. But we're going to head back to Violet Hill, the boat ramp, because there's a 23 knots westerly coming in about lunchtime. The only place that's really protected up here from the westerly is Violet Hill. So we're going to head back there and meet up with the other guys that are coming today. It's raining and the wind's picking up. All fun. So we all took shelter around the jetty in the moorings. On this trip I'm joined by my mate Gary. G'day Paul. To say it was frustrating was an understatement. Some of us had come a long way. Daryl had come all the way from Canberra in his Signet 20. Rick, what's going on? Well I'm just sitting in the sun here waiting for this 25 to 30 knot breeze to disappear which is probably going to be tomorrow. <laughs> It's and I'm as happy as Larry <laughs> to stay on the boat. Yeah, it is uh, pretty strong out there. <laughs> so Bruce, uh, you're going to go for a sail? Yeah, I'll go for a little sail for a while, Paul. <laughs> How strong do you think it is? Um, I don't know. It's um, very gusty, isn't it? Like maybe up there it's probably 20 knots or something. Yeah, yeah. A little yeah. stronger. At times. You, you're going to put any wet weather gear on or you just, no? Just, Maybe a shirt. Maybe today. a shirt, okay, right. A shirt today. Yeah. Maybe some pants. <laughs> I think it might actually be dropping a little bit. There was a lot of white water before that seems to have disappeared, so uh, maybe it's dropped down to 20 knots or something. Still pretty strong. And while Bruce got ready to set sail, undeterred by the weather, it gave me a chance to look at some of our other boats in detail. John, this is your Waller 5.4. Tell me all about it. I bought it pretty much as a wreck. And I uh, put about a year and a half's work into it to get it to where it is. Um, Didn't you say it was leaking when you bought it? Dollars. Yeah, it's leaking in the centre board. And the previous two owners couldn't find the leak. I found it in 10 minutes just by filling up the inside and laying underneath it till it came to the outside. Simple as <laughs> that. It was just a tiny pinhole. Yeah. I think it might have been in there from day one. So how old is this boat, do you reckon? I'd guess five to eight years, something like that. Oh, okay. So it's relatively new compared to a lot of them. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's an Australian designer, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, he's an Aussie Mike designer. Waller. He yeah. makes cats. He makes big cats and small cats and these. I had a, I had a, um, a Waller cat. Yeah. So I, I like the design of that. So I, I saw this come up. Did you look for a long time? No, I was lucky. Probably only six months or so. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can I ask you how much you pay for it, do you reckon? I pay 5,000 bucks for this. Oh my god, that's but nothing. I probably spent 5,000 bucks. Yeah, but that, that's still very cheap. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with it. I think it's a, the best all rounder boat I've had. And it's fast too. Yeah, it's fast, it's stable. And you've got a Jenica on the front, I notice. I had a Genoa and it was just overpowering the front. It kept dragging the front around you. It's hard to control. Yeah. So I, I got a little jib made up and I really like the jib. Yeah. I, mean, I can do anything with the boat. I can yeah. I feel really relaxed. But and then with the with the Genic, you know, you're running downhill two yeah. knots of wind, you can do two knots of speed. Yeah. It's exciting having that big Genica out the front. Yes, well hopefully we will get a sail in, but not at the moment. <laughs> no. <laughs> Gusting to thirty knots today. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a bit strong. Yeah. Something happened the other day, uh, John, yeah, what, so what was, was the problem? I reached over to grab my last Freddo frog out of my food chest. And I got it almost to my mouth and I dropped it down the centre board there. And it's oh, still there. No. Well, you can keep it for later. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a bilge pump down here, but it goes into the cockpit. That's right? the timber out of a window I pulled out of a house. Yeah, yeah. You can just pick it up and take it with you. Oh, that's a great idea. John, you made the seat at the back or the port at the back? Yes, I made the seat out of foam core. Super lightweight, easy to work. Yeah. 
slide the mask crutch straight in and you don't have to have any ropes or anything yeah. holding it up. Easy yeah. in, easy out, saves time for the setup and the And why do you up. why do you like this sugar scoop design of the back of the boat? Oh well, see, I'm always in the water. Yeah. Uh, I think if you've come to the water and you don't swim, you haven't been to the water. <laughs> it would make it so much easier to get yes. in and out. If, if us old fellas can get our fat belly over that, <laughs> over that ridge there, we're in. We're just rolling like a seal. <laughs> Are you happy with your electric outboard as well? Yes, I'm very happy. Well, I've been here for a week and, and it's still used two bars out of ten. And you've got no solar? No. It's lithium though, it's got a lithium battery. Yeah, there's yeah. a lithium that is fantastic. Fantastic, very quiet, beautiful little motor. Still a little bit fruity out there. Now, the big question is, has Bruce got one reef in or two? As you know, Bruce never reefs, so <laughs> this is going to be interesting. He's actually making good progress considering he's heading right into it. Yeah, it's just quite narrow through there. Mm. What's, what's it reading, Steve? Someone 18, like... 21, 20. Yeah. It feels 18, a lot stronger, 16, though, doesn't it? Yeah, 21. Bruce has returned. So it's been an interesting day. We've just been standing around chatting all day, basically. The wind got up to 26, 28 knots. It seems to be dropping a bit now. It's about uh, 5 o'clock. I mean, still strong. Um, Bruce managed to capsize. Um, yes, he took a lot of water on board. He doesn't want to talk about it, but he did go over. And then his outboard got swamped and uh, wouldn't start. So then that's why he was sitting over there because he was trying to dry out his outboard and take the plugs out and everything to get it going. Eventually he got it going and then he came back. So I think we've got uh, 13 boats, something like that. Uh, there's a couple more people coming tomorrow and there's somebody else coming tonight. Um, yeah. The day that never was, or the sail that never was. Hopefully tomorrow it'll be better. I personally, I'd rather sail it with a bloody cabin. Cabin is a good idea. idea. Yeah, <laughs> they, yeah, they... <laughs> well, good morning. We had uh, quite a windy night last night. Just having a coffee. Uh, a couple more people have turned up. And hopefully we'll get to sail later. <laughs> oh. Terry, this is your amazing CLC pocket ship. That's right. How long did it take you to build? It took me eight months. This was eight my months. Is yeah. that all? Yeah. Oh well, my god. Yeah. That's well, amazing. It was, it was supposed to be a retirement project, but I got stuck into it. Yeah. yeah. Well, you've done an amazing job. Well, thank you. And the paintwork, I keep saying it, the paintwork is absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. Yeah. It turned out all right. Just don't look at the other side. Okay, let's go and look at the other side. <laughs> <laughs> so Misty Blue. Now, didn't Donald Trump know someone called Misty? <laughs> was know, that just a coincidence? No, well, when I was building this boat, my pet, Cat, oh. was always beside me. She's a rag doll. Right. So her name's Misty. And I called her Misty uh, because she's got Misty Blue Eyes. Oh. So anyhow, it turned out pretty good at the end. Oh, it's fantastic. Absolutely amazing. Even the crutch for the, the mast is staggering. Well, that's a part of the design. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it works well. Yeah. Mm. So, is, are you, you going to build any more? Is that done? No, you finished building boats? Well, it's a, it's a bit of a secret at the moment. But anyhow, oh. yes, I'm, gonna, I'm planning on building another boat. It's a Sam Devlin um, lobster boat. Right. Yeah, so, and, but the problem is, my wife doesn't know about it yet. Oh, oh, I and think we so, should probably tell her. Do you think so? <laughs> So you spent eight months building, and this is how how long ago did you finish it? Not oh, I finished it at the end of, uh, the end of last year. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I, I would have I would have thought you'd had enough of sawdust by now, or, or you oh know. no, I love it. Oh well, I've got bags of sawdust that we use for kitty litter. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you're running out of kitty litter, so you've got to build so another I boat. Build another yeah. Boat. Oh, fair enough. I completely understand. It works. Yeah. 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 <laughs> And what's the uh, the cabin surrounds and stuff? Uh, it's Jarrah, then you've got maple on top. So the big question is, 
You can buy these as a kit, can't you? Yes. But you built it from, from plans. From plans, yes. At eight months, and uh, does your wife know how much it cost? I don't think so. Okay, how much did it cost? Well, <laughs> well, yeah, I would have got change out of 10 grand, I would say. Wow, yeah. that's incredible. Mm. A boat of that standard for 10 grand. I mean, obviously the man hours must be worth a fortune. Good, but so You don't put that into it. No, but I mean, 10 grand. Inspirational stuff. Inspirational stuff. And the quality of craftsmanship continues in the cabin. So the fridge fits in this central compartment. My locker for this, that and the other. And basically you've got quarter berths to sleep in. These fit on here. And to give me a little bit of ventilation. Oh my goodness, look at that. And you've got mozzie net on the back of that. It's just made out of... Oh, that's maple. That's maple. And the varnish work is incredible. And that's Jarrah? That's Jarrah. That's, uh, that's maple. Right. Yeah, maple is so many different colours. But... Yeah. Yeah. And even the solar panel has a timber frame. So Terry, how many boats have you built? Oh, this, this is my seventh. <laughs> your seventh? Seventh. About seventh the... boat? Yeah. My God. And you're not a carpenter? No, no, I wouldn't want to be one of those. <laughs> but I'm, I've made two dinghies. Right. Uh, what were those? Uh, Can't remember. No, it's just something that I put together. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> it wasn't a plan, it was just, uh, just put it together. Um, oh. Um, made the plans up and then myself and then build it yeah it, it worked and i thought i could do another one i've made a speedboat and three cruising boats oh. about to build a, a lobster boat and hopefully that's the end of it <laughs> <laughs> what are your neighbors like very accommodating to uh sand is they going day and night and, <laughs> they have to be <laughs> they're okay wow they're nice neighbors wow hmm. So Terry, you've got a method of um, sealing your bearings that I haven't heard of before. Tell us about it. That's right. So you uh, put the smallest amount of grease on the bearing, but when you put this ring on, you put a, a film of Sikaflex around that ring and then put that onto the hub. Okay. And then you put this block on there and smack it down with a hammer so it goes down nice and even and then wipe off the excess. Put a film of grease in there and the seal goes onto it like that. Simple as. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Here'd be the what end of the lesson. The, the oh, the outside. Um, all right. So if you have one of these, you just put a film of um, sticker flex around there, and then you hit that. But you never use one of those type because you're pumping grease into it. And you're putting too much grease in. The grease holds the heat, and then they burn out. Yeah, so what's the, what's the point of the sticker flex? Is that just oh, to seals, seal it? seals it all up. Huh. Make sure no water gets in there. Because as, as you put the boat, the boat in the water, the heat inside the axle uh, shrinks up to yeah. the, and it sucks in a bit of water. Is this a thing most mechanics know? Because I've just had my bearings replaced <laughs> and I don't know if they did that or not. No, they wouldn't have done it. Oh, okay. They had to go to that course. Wow. Yes. So there it is. Easy. And it works. I do have a little motorboat. It was now Sunday and the winds had definitely died down, so it allowed us to go sailing, which is why we came here. We're somewhere between here and here. Right. Yeah, that's about it, really. It was strong, the wind before, but now it's sort of died a bit. It's still very peaceful, Paul. It is, you know. Yes. Hey, it's 
Cutler's Cottage. We stopped at Corsman's Landing for lunch, a great little campsite, but it does get quite busy in summer. Well, it's been an adventure. Yeah, <laughs> so did you have an interesting sail, Gary? We did have an interesting zigzag up the river. It was like a zigzag up. <laughs> yes, there was a lot of tanking. Lots of birds to see. So Robin's got to head back, so uh, he's heading off now. And he's Hartley. Jabaroo, not a heron. So we've got to stay ahead of the pocket ship, right? To see how fast he goes and how fast we go. Gary's catching us, Gary. Gary's catching us. Well, do something. <laughs> the thing you sail on. <laughs> and you've got newer sails, newer paintwork. <laughs> yeah, we're overtaking him now. Because he's, you see, he's, yeah. as soon as he's got no wind in his sail, So we sailed from Violet Hill this morning all the way down and around to Causeman's Landing. We were going to go further to two miles sands or freshwater, but uh, the wind swung around to the north, so uh, it helped us get back. So we're coming back to uh, Johnson's Beach tonight. It's about five o'clock now, the sun's setting. Well, it will be shortly. It's getting a little bit chilly, a little bit chilly, uh, but yeah, nice day. What was on eye? It's misty. It was definitely misty. So, what are we having for dinner tonight? Well, because Gary's aboard a special guest, we're going to have something a bit different. We're going to have jackfruit, which is basically a fruit and a meat substitute. And then someone strangely suggested that I should probably get something called dead potato with onion. Y yeah, so I'm going to try some dead potato with onion. And we're going to have some spinach with it and some tomatoes and hopefully it will be fine. It's jackfruit, um, and to give it a bit of flavouring, I've gone with a shepherd's pie flavouring mix from Aldi. That'll do. Oh, it doesn't that look delicious? This looks great. <laughs> you could always get a job in Long Bay. <laughs> Yum. Dead potato. Mmm. So this is jackfruit with tomatoes and spinach and a flavouring. Actually, it looks quite good. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm amazed. No, I've got to put... So, Gary, have you got food poisoning or is it OK? It's actually very good. I was surprised. <laughs> I mean, if you, well, you this surprised? Long, if you serve this in Long Bay, they would be quite impressed, I think. <laughs> And for those no. overseas viewers, Long Bay is a jail in Sydney. 
I think that's a bit harsh, Gary. No, 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 it's actually very good. It sort of it sort of looks like well yeah. Don't look at it. No, it, well it tastes all right. I hate your vision. <laughs> it tastes. <laughs> it tastes it's all a, right. I think the um, the spinach was a master stroke though, Paul. <laughs> it certainly yeah. takes your mind off the. F- <laughs> so, so, so you think there's legs in the dinghy cruising master chef competition? <laughs> That would be a good idea. I could see all the boats lined up on the beach, all serving their, sl- I'm sorry, e- evening meals. And... <laughs> no, it's not too bad. I've tasted it. Mm. It's not too bad. Mm. Morning, Gary. Morning, Paul. Sleep all right? Really well, really well. You've got a fancy anchor recovery system. What's it called? It's called the Ars 10. The the Ars 10. Yeah, 10 tries to get it right. And and, and it's A R S, so anchor, anchor reco- recovery system. Very nice. I like that. Very good. You should patent that. <laughs> and 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 how does it work exactly? Well, the whole idea is to try and get the anchor back onto the boat with it yeah. going to the front on the pocket ship. There's no real deck to walk around the side, but you store your anchor at the back. Yeah. So it's basically a a method of dragging the anchor to the stern so you can pull it up. That's right, yeah, without um, falling in. So we've had an early lunch and now we're back on the water. There is about two or three knots, not a lot. Uh, We've just left Johnson's Beach and we're going to try and head up to Shelley's Beach and then back again, Um, going through the narrows where it's always a bit iffy. it's a beautiful day. I might pull my outboard out, but going through the narrows, you know, often you have to motor a bit, so I might wait. If you like my videos, please don't forget to hit the like button or subscribe, or even leave a comment. I will reply. With the bad weather long forgotten, it's days like these that we live for.
this is very pleasant. I'm being chauffeured around in Cape Louise by Gary. Uh, we've got five or six knots now. Um, some of the boats left last night. Uh, there's a few here left today. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six boats, seven boats here today. And it's beautiful. Good sailing. So, Paul, how does it feel to lead the fleet? Uh, it's a very rare thing for me to lead the fleet, but we think we found out the reason. I've taken the outboard out, and uh, taking the out the outboard, I thought was maybe one knot, two knots, but I think it's it's causing a lot more in the drag. So um, it's making a hell of a difference. I'm I'm not used to being here. It's it's quite scary, and I like it. If you're wondering why I just don't tilt the outboard out of the water, the outboard well prevents me from tilting, and half raising the outboard will hit the mizzen boom, but I do have some ideas about modifying. What a perfect way to end a perfect day. Ah, dinghy cruising, you've gotta love it. I know I always say this, it doesn't look much, but tonight I'm having um, roast vegetable couscous with fresh spinach, tomatoes and mushrooms and a tin of salmon mixed through it and it tastes really nice, a bit like kedgeree, it's really nice. Doesn't look much, very tasty though. Well, good morning. This is day, day five. Uh, we're heading back today. It's about 7.30 in the morning, 7, 7.30. Just put the coffee on. Uh, yeah, we've had a really good time. It's a bit chilly this morning, and the dew was quite heavy last night, but uh, it is winter, what do you expect? Um, but yeah, it's been a good time. Good group of people around the fire, good laugh at night. And we had some really great sailing yesterday. And the day before, in fact, almost forgotten the two days of sitting around waiting for the wind to die down over at Violet Hill. That was windy. Anyway, Daryl's heading off. He's got to get back to Canberra. That's probably a good six hours drive from here. So, uh, yeah. And his Signet 20, very nice looking boat. So thanks for watching Sailing Kate Louise and I'll see you somewhere on the water next time. <laughs>